Well, earlier I spoke to the Labour leadership contender Jeremy Corbyn and I began by asking him whether his parliamentary colleagues should back him or Harriet Harman over the government's welfare cuts. Well, there's a meeting of the Parliamentary Labour Party this evening and I hope they will decide, if there's to be a decision made there, that we should be opposing what the government is doing. So you've got no problem with somebody coming from abroad as a migrant with five kids, say, and claiming five lots of child tax credits, five lots of child benefits, housing benefit, people and children no limits on their benefits. People and children come first. The amount of money involved is not that great when compared to the total budget as a whole. What we're doing is going in a wrong direction by impoverishing children of large families and uh, uh, particularly in London where the benefit cap has had a devastating effect on people in the private rented sector. What rate of income tax is too high? The rate of income tax ought to be set on the ability to pay it and at the moment the top rate is t too low. I would go 50% and, and possibly slightly higher, but I'm actually more interested in collecting uncollected corporation tax and corporate taxation. The <laughs> real issue... Real... Can, can, can I finish? The real issue is corporate tax fraud across the world. But the bigger point is how much inequality we are prepared to live with in this country, isn't it? You know, should we accept the existence of super-rich people? Or, or would there be no super rich people the in ideal, Britain the, if you were Prime Minister? Are super rich people actually happy with being super rich? No, I'm are asking they, you, would you end them? I would want the super rich to be able to pay properly their share of the needs of the rest of the community. But they wouldn't be super but, rich anymore, would they? But the issue is actually that there's a crossover between um, income tax and high income people over towards the uh, uh, corporate tax sector and they often evade taxation by that means. Let's briefly talk about foreign affairs. Why did you call Hamas and Hezbollah your friends? What I did was spoke at a meeting in which I said I wanted all people involved in the Middle East issue to come together and be able to have a discussion, to be able to well, you discuss... Said, oh, can, I, can, I, can, can you allow me to finish? Uh, well, Do you mind? Yeah, but I asked you a question and you're no. ignoring it. No, I'm not ignoring the question. If you'd give me a minute, I'll answer it. I, the I point you, is, the point is this. Friends? Listen for a minute, if you don't mind. I spoke at a meeting about the Middle East crisis in Parliament and there were people there from Hezbollah and I said, I welcomed our friends from Hezbollah to have a discussion and a debate. And I said I wanted Hamas to be part of that debate. I have met Hamas in Lebanon and I've met Hezbollah in this country in Lebanon. I've also so met... are they can your I, friends or can not? Can I finish? Are I've they all... your friends or not? Can I finish? I've also met... Well, you can't if it's a long, no. long answer. Look, the, not... issue is, the issue is this. You are not prepared to discuss the whole issue of the Middle East. You're not prepared to discuss the wider question. The wider question is Hamas, Hezbollah are part of a peace process. Even the former head of Mossad says that there has to be talks involving Hamas. I've also had discussions with people from the right in Israeli politics who have the same view, possibly, that the state of Israel should extend from the river to the sea as it is claimed people from the Palestinian side do. And I'm very happy do. for you to make all of that clear. Right. I'm saying you use these words, friends. Now, are you saying they're not your friends? Or are you saying, saying they are your friends? I'm saying that people I talk to I use it in a collective way, saying our friends were prepared to talk to you. Does it mean I agree with Hamas and what it does? No. Does it mean I agree with Hezbollah and what they do? No. What it means is that I think to bring about a peace process, you have to talk to people with whom you may profoundly disagree. There is not going to be any peace process unless there is talks involving Israel, um, Hezbollah and Hamas. And I think everybody true. knows that. But as you know, the controversy is around you calling them friends. And you've explained, I think, that when you said that, you didn't mean that they're, fr they're friends. I used, is that, is that it, I used it in a collective yeah. way at a discussion, and you're trying to trivialise the whole no, issue of the Middle East. You're trying to trivialise the whole discussion about how you bring about a long-term peace process. I'm, and I'm you very know happy, that. I'm very happy and to you have, know that. No, I'm very happy to have long conversations with well, you. Well, why don't we have them, then? And you've been on this programme talking about the Middle East many times Well, not before. very recently, actually. You but, haven't had me on for but, a long But time. This, this quote about friends has, has surfaced, and that's what I was asking you about, and you've, you've had your opportunity to... Well, thanks for the tabloid journalism. Answer, that's not tabloid journalism. Yes, that, that's putting your own words back. It's tabloid saying, journalism where you're evading, you are evading asking me to give an opportunity to discuss well, the wider issue of the Middle East. Well, you, no, because all you're well, interested actually, in, what I was going to ask you next was something rather more said. important. No, it's tabloid journalism and you know it.
Well, it's absolutely not. I was asking you about it's your own words, journey, and if you're not prepared to defend your own words, then that's fine. I'm but, quite prepared to defend my own words. I've just done so. I want to get on to a bigger aspect of foreign policy, which we could have done minutes ago had you, not, had you just answered the question when I answered it, which is, is it noble, is it right to continue doing nothing to intervene in Syria? I think the decision not to bomb Syria is an, or to bomb Syria, not to bomb Syria, is an important one. If we'd started bombing now, what would it achieve? Probably not very much. It would then be followed up by ground forces and we'd then be back into a war. I think the issue has to be choking off the arms supply and the money that goes to ISIL, recognise where ISIL have come from, and also recognising, I think there was quite a big mistake in not reconvening the Geneva Conference involving Iran, which could have helped to bring about a much earlier point, a ceasefire in the other part of the Syrian civil war, that is between the government of Syria, Free Syrian Army and the Kurdish forces, as opposed to the ISIL forces, which have grown significantly in the past year. I don't think British intervention by military means is going to bring about a solution to it. I think there has to be ultimately a political solution. I think we also need to look at the role that Saudi Arabia and other countries are, paying, are playing rather, in the arms they're putting into the area. Jeremy Corbyn, and for more in-depth on that and interviews with the other candidates, go to our website, channel4.com forward slash news. More indeed on the Middle East as well.